Welcome back to the Orchid City Zoo. Hey guys, Kingpin here. Welcome to the next episode of Sandbox Mode. With the African-focused Arid Pack rapidly approaching console, now is a great time to upgrade our African section. The first animal you'll find in our African zone in the Orchid City Zoo is the African Penguin. These incredibly social birds have a very modern exhibit focusing on water. This is going to be a sharp contrast to the majority of our savanna-based builds. The rough plan for Africa so far is to start off in the coast with our penguins. We're then going to travel to the savanna, and then inwards towards the jungle. In the last episode, we started off with our very first savanna build. We created the Horn Research Facility. This incredibly modern exhibit specializes in the southern white rhinoceros. This was a relatively challenging build, and without a doubt our largest yet. The southern white rhinos that call it home are quite happy here, however. I don't want to have two giant exhibits right next to each other, so springboarding off of our largest exhibit, today we're going to work on one of our smallest. While the exhibit itself might be small, the level of detail packed into such a space is certainly not. If you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We have such an excellent community here, and we'd be happy to have you in it. Traditionally in any sandbox game, whether it be Planet Zoo console, Minecraft, or anything, something I typically really struggle with is filling up empty spaces like this in between my builds. Luckily, this space is just big enough to where I think we can fit an exhibit for a relatively small animal inside of here, and not take away from the great view of our southern white rhinoceros. But what animal can we pick? Let's check the Zoopedia! If you're looking for an animal to take up a very small amount of space, the meerkat is one of the best options in the game by far. Native to the southern tip of Africa, as well as the Africa DLC pack, meerkats only need a space of about 180 square meters, plus 14 for an additional member. Surprisingly, meerkat social groups don't have to be as big as you would think. They only necessarily need two in a group to thrive. I'm excited for this build, because there's some new enrichment items I've never used before. Despite their incredibly cute appearance, like our African penguins, meerkats are actually carnivores. Despite being carnivores, they're not at the top of the food chain, and often have to employ lookouts or sentries to guard their group and warn them of other predators. This is why the main aspect of their build is going to be a large mound in the center where they can stand on top of and burrow under. Keep your eye out for these three hidden items somewhere in the video, and timestamp them if you can find it in the comments below. Also feel free to leave name suggestions for our four meerkats. I just said the centerpiece of this exhibit is going to be the mound in the center, and while that is technically true, I also want to add something for the guests to enjoy as well on the outside. Breaking a bad habit in real life is one of the toughest things a person can do, although the only thing tougher than breaking a bad habit in real life is breaking a bad habit in a video game, because there's no actual consequences to doing it wrong over and over again. My bad habit in Planet Zoo is making everything like I'm playing Minecraft, since I have much more experience in that game. I make everything in Planet Zoo squares and rectangles, because that's pretty much all you can do in Minecraft. I want to change that today, so the centerpiece for the guest is going to be the meerkat's indoor viewing, and I'm going to try my best to make it a circle. It was a little bit difficult, but I found that if you copy and pasted items over and rotated them on the y-axis, you can actually make a completely 360 degree circle. Geometrically perfect. I really like how it looks. Getting the basic shape was the hard part. After that, you simply just take where you want your glass to be, lower it into the ground, and then put the roof on later. It actually only took me a couple tries. Putting the roof on was somehow even more simple than the actual build itself. Pretty much all I did was select a roof piece that can go on the grid, put four of them together, rotating it 90 degrees each time, taking the entire product, advanced moving it, and then making it center of the actual circular part of the build. It was incredibly easy. This was without a doubt the most challenging aspect of the build so far, but not challenging in a traditional way where it's legitimately hard. It was just a bit awkward to try and put a rectangular piece inside of a circular build. The only part to be wary of when you're trying this technique is just try and make sure that the glass doesn't appear on the inside, because you don't want that to be seen. Overall, I'm quite happy with the shaping of the build, although I will admit I'm not married to the white color. I thought it would be cool and contrast heavily with the roof, but I actually kind of want it to match more. Details will be last. Next, we need to start preparing for the arrival of the meerkats. One of my big goals for this exhibit in particular is to not use any pre-game barriers, besides obviously the gates that you legitimately have to use. We're going to be using complete null barriers, and then try to make the barriers for the meerkats themselves look as natural as possible, mixing it with some glass. Just because you're not using the in-game barriers doesn't mean your barriers have to be overly complicated. I simply found this off the workshop, and I really like it. 
Contrary to most of our builds, I don't want the meerkats to be seen from every possible angle. This is because they're going to have to share a pretty close proximity with our southern white rhinoceros in the Horn Research Facility, and we don't want there to be a huge crowd. Exhibit boundaries complete. While looking for habitat inspiration on YouTube, Reddit, or any other social media source, one trick that I frequently see used is the use of these stalactite pieces from the Twilight Pack. So if you don't have the Twilight Pack, you might have to sit this one out unfortunately, but I highly recommend purchasing the Season Pass for Planet Zoo Console at least. Anyways, effectively what we're doing right here is just turning the pieces on their heads and using the Advanced Movement menu to move them around and make a rock wall that looks really convincing. Surprisingly, this looks just as good as the faux rocks from the Aquatic Pack, which I'm notorious for using in pretty much every build. After we're happy with the shape, we're simply going to plug the holes with it. This is exactly how we're going to take pressure away from the Southern White Rhino. Exactly how I wanted it. We're getting close. I think it's about time we actually let the meerkats inside of the exhibit. We have four today. I'm excited to see what their models look like. I don't know a whole lot about this species, but I've been reading up on them in preparation for this video. Wow, they're really cute. And honestly, a lot bigger than I thought they would be. When building for any animal, but especially a small one, it's important not to get taken aback by its cuteness. The very first thing you should always do is make sure that the traversable area is good, and it looks like our exhibit passes the test. They can't escape. If you'll recall from our Southern White Rhino episode, we messed around with the terrain pretty heavily. We started off by using heavy soil and sand and transitioned it into grass. We're going to be using a similar technique, except this exhibit is going to be entirely sand. This is the savanna aspect of the African portion of the build, so this is going to be a really sandy area. We're going to transition it into the jungle in later builds. Now we need to actually work on the meerkat's mound, and remember, this needs to be just tall enough to where they can get an elevated view to look for predators along the savanna horizon. We don't want it to be a complete mountain, otherwise they won't be able to get up there. Meerkats aren't necessarily good climbers, they live in the flat savanna after all. I think this is the exact effect I was trying to capture. It's plenty big for their small stature. It seems like the meerkats are enjoying exploring their habitat. However, they're looking for enrichment. Let's add some. I've never used the tennis ball, termite mound, or this log before. At first I was a bit confused on how the log actually worked. I hesitate to say disappointed because I figured you'd put it through and they could almost burrow through it and you could make your own tunnel systems for the meerkats. That's not how it works, however. This is perfectly fine. Matter of fact, it actually helped us because it forced me to get a little bit more creative with details that'll be added much later into the video. I didn't necessarily like the look of just having these random logs scattered throughout the exhibit, so I eventually added a lot more dead branches and decay into the savanna. Savannas aren't necessarily known for their lush wildlife and plant life. Just look at the animal's requirements. The rhino, meerkats, and I'm assuming other animals that I've yet to build for don't necessarily like a whole lot of plant life, so we're gonna have to add this into the details. Overall, it was a little bit challenging placing this enrichment compared to normal. This exhibit is relatively small compared to what I typically work with, unless I'm building for an animal like the penguin, so it was kind of challenging to spread out the enrichment far enough to where it looked good, and also realistic enough to where the animals would reasonably use it. The one detail I really liked that I added was actually adding this sprinkler on top of their mound. That would give the meerkats a reason to go up there, aside from looking out. The next major detail in the exhibit I wanted to furbish was actually the corners of it. The corners of the exhibit are typically transition periods in between what you're looking at in the zoo from a guest perspective, so I wanted to make them really pop. In order to do this, I took a fraction of the stalactite piece we've been using before, put it more into the ground, and then came back with some soil. I then put the soil in between the areas, making a convincing plant bed. After the plant beds were complete, I came back and put some African plants on top of them. This is mainly to acquire depth in the build. I frequently talk about depth and how important it is. In this build, it was relatively difficult since the meerkats don't like a lot of plants, but similar to our rhino and our African penguins, geez, nothing in Africa that we've built for likes plants yet except our lemurs. Anyways, the purpose of the depth in this build was to actually make the build look a lot bigger than it actually is. The only large plants, and even then they're not that big compared to the other plants we've used so far, are in these little corner planters. This is because we don't want the meerkats to be able to interact with any of the plants we put up here. 
the reason that I don't want the meerkats to be able to touch and interact with these plants is because I want this exhibit to almost look like it's underground, from the guest perspective at least. Meerkats live underground in their burrows, however they typically spend most of their time above ground. I want this exhibit to look underground like the guests are almost looking down upon them. That's why we're messing with the elevation so much in this build, whether it be in the mound, these corner planters, or even the rocks we're currently placing. Despite this exhibit being perfectly flat on the ground at the base level, it looks like it has a lot more hills and elevation going on in it. This is simply just an effect that I wanted to capture. It makes the build look a lot more interesting. Typically elevation is something I struggle a lot with to implement, but I think I've been doing a lot better job mixing up my build's variety lately. The final plant-related detail for now is something you should be all too familiar with if you've seen the channel so far. And if this is your first time, feel free to go back to the other videos and check them out. Some of them are pretty good. This detail is a little bit different in this video, though. We did the exact same thing for our southern white rhinoceros in the previous episode. However, this time we have to sink the grass even further into the ground since the meerkats are just that small. We don't want them to get lost. It looks like this meerkat's on sentry duty currently. He's taking his job pretty serious, defending from the evil sprinkler. Seriously, hats off to Frontier. These animals look incredible in Planet Zoo. Now we just need to figure out how to turn this exhibit into a good and detailed exhibit to an incredibly detailed exhibit. This is going to be easy. I already have a lot of ideas for how to do it. But first, let's talk about the future of this series. Since this game has come out in March, I've been incredibly addicted to Franchise Mode. However, upon going back to Franchise Mode, I realized that from a content creator standpoint, Sandbox Mode is actually superior in pretty much every way. It's a lot easier to bend the weather, get good shots for the video, and overall make more entertaining content. However, Franchise Mode also has some merit. Mainly the progression. I don't like how in sandbox mode you can start the game with the most expensive animals, and I want to implement a system of checks and balances to this series in particular so we can't just go crazy. I've already sort of been doing this from the start of the series. Remember, we started with red pandas, otters, and lemurs, animals you could reasonably start a franchise with. However, starting now, I'm going to be implementing a few new rules for this series. In summary, I'm trying to merge franchise mode and sandbox mode. This is how we're gonna do it. Forgive me for how crude this is, I drew it up very quickly, but in summary, every animal is gonna have a point value. These are the ones I could just think of off the top of my head. But our single point animals, i.e. meerkats, we have a lemur species, and an African penguin, means we have three total points. We could use those points to get a two point animal. So since we have the southern white rhino as well, our Africa section so far has five points total. Meaning, if we get another two-point animal, we could afford an elephant, maybe a hippo or a lion, or something really big. This new system is also going to allow for plenty of community engagement, since the next animal will always be chosen by YouTube poll. Please, please give me some feedback for this idea in the comments below. I really need it. But anyways, let's get back to the present, what we're currently doing right now with the meerkat exhibit. Right now, we're just trying to simply put a trim over the glass to make it look a little bit more sturdy. After I got the perimeter completely surrounded, I then used the duplication and advanced movement menu to get the bottoms. It really is the simple details that make or break a build. It looks so much better already with just that little white highlight on the wood. I'm a huge fan of it. Like I said before, building in such a small scale is difficult, but I think we're doing a great job for these meerkats. The build isn't quite done yet though. The interior of the meerkat enclosure is still a little bit barren, and I get that's what we're going for, but we have to detail it up a little bit more. In order to accomplish this, we're going to be using even more plants, but to get around the meerkat's relatively stingy plant requirement, these plants are no longer alive. We're simply going to be using a lot of branches. The way I like to set this up is to put all of the branches that I have plans for using over on the side. We're going to get rid of them later, so don't worry if they look good or bad. It's completely temporary. The reason that this actually works is because these plants, while dead, are still plants at the end of the day, technically aren't part of nature in this game. These actually come from the construction menu, and nothing in the construction menu, regardless if it's a plant or not, can possibly affect an animal's plant settings. Therefore, you can put a thousand of these things in the exhibit, and it won't affect it by even half a percent. Meerkats have such a small frame and don't necessarily climb on things, so these are going to be absolutely perfect for them to duck and crawl under, hide under, and since they can't climb on them, they won't be able to use them to escape the exhibit. 
Overall, it is incredibly difficult and a little bit tedious to detail in this way. It's a lot easier to use something like rocks. When an animal doesn't like plants, you have to get really creative using things from the construction menu and even things from the nature menu that don't count as plants like faux rocks, maybe some stalactites like we already used, or a variety of other items. The main and biggest reason I wanted to do this is because I'm not a fan of how these log enrichment items look, but I really like the animations that the meerkats do inside of them, I'll show it later in the video, so I had to include them. I wanted to add just a few more logs to make it look a little more natural. One on its own just looks weird. And yeah, I'd say that makes it look a lot better than it did before. Such little details, but it really brings the place together, adding a bit of a contrasting color. And our rhino just sprinted over to that mud pool. Could this really not have waited till the end of the cinematic shot? Alright, I tried this in the penguin episode, and it went pretty well. A lot of positive feedback, so let's do another live walkthrough. Normally I don't do this, but I kind of enjoyed it last time, I'm not gonna lie. This is our African section. As you can see, we added a few things off camera. Right here we have, I don't know, maybe a food court? Something small. Definitely not big enough for an exhibit, because the first exhibit is our southern white rhinoceros. And I actually don't see him right now, and that's a first, because he is huge. After that, you'll come to the meerkat enclosure. Really happy with how it turned out. Lots of sticks everywhere, some dry grass, it truly does look like a savanna. And this is going to segue nicely into the jungle section when we eventually build that. That'll be in a few episodes, though. We still have a few savanna animals to add. Aardvark, fennet fox, maybe the porcupine, depending on when the arid pack eventually arrives. And how it works. I have to check out all the animals. I'm really excited for both packs that are coming out, truly. That's one of my absolute favorite animations in the game. The fact that they can just go underground like that and pop up somewhere else, it's so cool. Surprisingly, there's not a whole lot of guests around here. A lot of them are still in Asia Quest. I typically find that that's where a majority of them go. Look, and he popped out right there. Isn't that so cool? They make a ton of these little burrows around the whole exhibit. Like I said in the regular video, this is what I originally thought the log was for. Dang, I really want to put a Mario Brothers pipe sound effect when they go down there in the video in post-production. That would be funny. But yeah, other than the indoor viewing, which is right here, that's the end of the exhibit. It still needs a little bit of polish work. The path and grass kind of meet awkwardly in some places, and now I'm in a bush. But we'll figure that out later. I'll be the first one to admit it, when the Africa pack was announced, I was probably least excited for the meerkats to come to the game. I just thought they were too small and not that interesting. It happens once in a blue moon, but I'll admit, I was wrong. They're definitely not my favorite animal from the pack, it's hard to compete with the African penguin, which I think is the best animal in the game. But overall, these guys have really cute and polished animations, I highly recommend it. I also highly recommend that if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more quality content coming very soon. By the time the next video comes out, we'll have completely polished our new system for sandbox mode and how to pick the animals. Remember, it's going to be community driven, so pay attention to the community tab. And if you haven't already, now is a great time to ring the bell. By doing this, it'll ensure that you never miss out on having your voice heard. I want everyone to feel like they're a part of this series. Just because I'm the one actually creating it, doesn't mean that you the viewers can't help choose what I build next. Speaking of what's coming next, let's give a little sneak peek. That is what you're supposed to do at the end, after all. Right here is going to be an indoor section, which is going to be the only one in all of the Africa Zone. Probably for an aardvark, fennec fox, or maybe even a porcupine. Other than that, we have a very large expanse. We can realistically fit any amount of animals we could possibly want back here. It all depends on what we want to do after Africa, but we'll figure that out later. That's going to be it for today's video. I really hope you guys liked and enjoyed it. That's going to be it for now, though. Until next time, Kingpin out.